John claims SeaWorld downplayed acts of whale aggression, wanting to maintain its family-friendly image. Indy Irwin in hot water. We are so thrilled to finally be joining SeaWorld. Save me. Twitter exploded in condemnation. It used to be such a wonderful blue planet. Australia Zoo today issued a statement defending the initiative. Bindi Irwin is thrilled to be involved with SeaWorld. No fear of anyone, till John Hargrove, you may remember that name from the documentary Blackfish. He knew he always wanted to work with killer whales ever since he was a child. But after more than a decade of working in his dream job as a trainer at SeaWorld, he decided to blow the whistle on his employer and expose the dangers he was seeing behind the scenes. Here's a preview of tonight's whistleblower episode on CBS. For decades, killer whales were the main attraction at SeaWorld. They performed mind-boggling stunts with trainers like John Hargrove. You know, it was surreal. Nothing at that time in my life, nothing meant more to me. SeaWorld first opened in 1964. Early on, little was known about the whales, let alone how they would fare in captivity. But one thing was sure, the whales drew crowds. But John says he came to realize those performances masked the reality of the harmful effects of captivity after seemingly sweet moments with a whale named Tilikum. Tilikum was one of SeaWorld's most well-known killer whales. He was linked to three people's death. We actually have a trainer in the water with one of our whales. Dawn was suddenly yanked into the water and mauled to death. SeaWorld's statement was that it was not aggressive and that he was simply playing with Dawn. No reasonable person would believe it. I cannot tell you how pissed off I am when I hear this, and she's not alive to defend herself. Pure evil, the SeaWorld circus fly downfall, deep dive, capitalism, and profits over lives. Brief history of SeaWorld the park. SeaWorld the company was founded in 1964 by Militant Sea. SeaWorld is an American theme park circus chain with headquarters in Orlando, Florida, and other marine SeaWorld parks all across the United States of America. The parks also feature thrill rides, including roller coasters. Their operations located within the United States in Orlando, Florida, San Diego, California, San Antonio, Texas, later outside the United States, such as Albu, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and previously Adora, Ohio. On March 5th, Twin Sun SeaWorld Orlando announced an addition of the Octa Water Park to its Adventure Park, which already includes SeaWorld and Discovery Cove. SeaWorld, first off, is not a zoo. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what anybody says. Despite what they, SeaWorld themselves, and vegan PETA activists have to say about it, calling it a zoo, I don't think it's a zoo. Zoos are educational places that do lots of great conservation work and field science studies around the world and around the globe. Zoos actually help with biodiversity loss. Capitalism is the main cause of animal extinction and biodiversity loss as a whole. SeaWorld was always and is still like an ocean version of a circus. Circuses are known for animal abuse and animal exploitation where animals are abused for entertainment. Just like in circuses, there's no difference between a circus and what SeaWorld is doing. The trainers used to get in the water and put on a show for the paying customers with the killer whales and put on a water themed circus theme, you know, tricks. They only changed the image to conservation efforts because people saw the documentary Blackfish and SeaWorld started being a pro-money typical capitalist company that only truly cares about making money and profits. Because they were losing money, they only changed their image. SeaWorld is no different than how Walt Disney Company is known for how they treat animals as a whole. Money is the only driving factor. Exploitation labeled as conservation is the latest way to lure tourists and customers after losing money and profits. It is no surprise that SeaWorld is moving its chips into the Middle Eastern market when you consider its downfall following the release of the 2013 American documentary Blackfish nearly a decade on. Every major UK tour operator from TripAdvisor to Virgin Holidays and British Airways Holidays have stopped selling tickets to its parks. 
On November 2014, SeaWorld announced that attendance at its park had dropped and profits had fallen 28% over that quarter. As of November 2014, the company's stock was down 50% from the previous year. From 2014 to 2015, net income for the second quarter fell 84% from $37.4 million to $5.8 million, while revenue fell from $405 million to $392 million. And in February 2020, SeaWorld announced a $65 million settlement with investors who alleged the company had deceived them about the documentary's effect on park attendance. This is the only reason, the true reason why they tried to clean up their image and act and save their reputation. They were losing their investors, aka their capitals and profits. Tonight, SeaWorld and its former chief executive have agreed to pay the federal government $5 million. The reason is to settle fraud charges. Now to our other breaking news at SeaWorld, where Tilikum, the killer whale that killed trainer Don Bradshaw, has died. They are being subjected to sunlight without shade protection that causes cataracts and damage to the eyes. They're swimming in chemically treated water. The documentary Blackfish grossed $2 million at the box office and has been seen by more than 21 million TV viewers after its broadcast on CNN. The movie challenges how SeaWorld treats its orcas or killer whales, often called by the name Shamu. But also their confinement could be humane, could be inhumane, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come to the conclusion that the confinement might be part of the problem? Um, I think it's actually a combination of really understanding what it is that they need in the wild and also understanding what it is that happens, actually really happens at SeaWorld. Um, and so in terms of what they need in the wild, we learn that over the course of the years, you know, I'm a mother who took her kids to SeaWorld. So, you know, I made this documentary without really knowing anything about whales or really there's the science behind them. They um, swim up to 100 miles a day. Out in the wild. Correct, in the wild. In captivity, they just do laps around a pool. Um, you know, they f fight with one another in the pools in confinement because, you know, although they do that, right, they vie for dominance in the wild, once that subdominant animal loses that tussle, they're peaceful. They, that animal's now an outlier and they kind of continue on quite peaceably. In captivity, nobody ever gets to flee. So they constantly fight. In 2013, SeaWorld's treatment of killer whales in captivity was the basis of the documentary film Blackfish, which documents the history of Talcum, the male killer whale, a killer whale captured by Sealand of the Pacific, who has been involved in the deaths of three people in total. Talcum was initially in Sealand to begin with before he went to SeaWorld. He was punished by having food withheld if he didn't do play ball or do circus tricks. He was locked in overnight with two females in a 30 feet cell. He was bullied by the said females. Bullying is a thing that all animals, including people, do. He was then sold to SeaWorld. All the abuses he suffered all his life at Sealand and SeaWorld as a whole made him into the whale he became. You cannot blame him for his behavior and what he went through. He thought Don was withhold. He thought Don, the trainer at SeaWorld, was withholding food from him after he had done his bit. He had missed a whistle cue, cue to tell him to stop. They had run out of food, and then Don sent him off without a reward. What the hell did they expect? That poor whale probably suffered from some type of post-traumatic stress disorder. He probably essentially went into a whale panic attack or post-traumatic post stress disorder attack having flashbacks of his past and current abuses in the SeaWorld bathtub. Terrified that he would start treating, the workers would start treating him the way they did uh, at Sealand regularly, you know, he probably did this. Dawn didn't deserve this. She did everything she was trained to do. SeaWorld is ultimately responsible for putting her and other workers and did the shows in that position and convincing them that it was safe when it wasn't safe at all. I'm going to talk more about how SeaWorld treats its employees, etc. in the lawsuits at the end of this video. But first I want to cover the pro-capitalism propaganda and greenwashing.
Sea World has has accused the accuracy of the film, calling it pure propaganda and emotionally manipulative fake documentary. Basically, that's what they allegedly said about the documentary Blackfish. Despite the fact that Sea World's only goal is to make money, because again, they are a water themed animal abusing circus that changed their image only because they lost their investors. Sea World has spent over fifteen million dollars on an advertising campaign counteracting the allegations and emphasizing. Its co contributions to the study of whales and their conservation. The CEO is a millionaire. Millionaires and billionaires shouldn't exist as a whole, and they are not self made. They are using the profits they made, exploiting off the backs of their workers who are actually doing all the work in the park to fund the CEO's lifestyle. And these capitalism greenwashing campaigns that they're trying to do to, you know, uh, make their image look better. In the film, along with the notoriously bad activist group PETA, it called out SeaWorld for the small bathtub-like cages. The parking lot of SeaWorld is allegedly bigger than the actual tanks themselves, allegedly. The company maintained the tanks bigger the move was in, not in response to the release of Blackfish documentary. Wild killer whales may travel up to 160 kilometers, 100 miles in a day, and critics say the animals are too big and intelligent to be in a bathtub basically suitable for captivity. In 2016, it was announced by SeaWorld that they no longer had plans to complete the expansion project. The plans to increase the size of the tanks in San Diego were put on hold in October 2015 after the California Coastal Commission ruled that the work could only go ahead and be done if they banned captive breeding of the killer whales, which would eventually lead to the end of the killer whale shows at the park. And on March 17, 2016, SeaWorld announced the end of their breeding program with the killer whales, which signifies the lost generation of orcas in captivity in their care. Though Terka was still pregnant at the time, they only did these changes because, again, they were losing capitals and profits. Her teeth aren't really good. You see them grinding down their teeth on the pool walls and ledges, breaking off their teeth where we have to go in then and, and manually drill the tooth. And they've saved their life, no doubt about it. For years she's been tortured and teased and people have done cruel and horrible things to her. We'll make sure she's got an enclosure that protects her from the people and the people from her. I get so frustrated. I've pulled trainers into the water broken their bones, and hit them. But they keep trying to artificially inseminate me. They keep making me do tricks for food. They keep me in these concrete tanks, and everyone around me dies. There has got to be something better than this. And they try to t tidy up their poor animal abusing pro capitalism image by employing Steve Irwin's famous conservationist daughter, Bindi Irwin, for conservation projects for SeaWorld Kids, which is really strange and weird that she would knowingly work with SeaWorld because Steve Irwin, if I'm correct, opposed crocodilian farming and harvesting. He rescued abused crocodiles, but yet the Irwin family is okay with SeaWorld exploitation of the killer whales and other like places that have like dolphins in captivity. I'm not a fan of them because this and other drama within the family. Bindi Irwin's grandfather speaks out and blasts SeaWorld just days after Bindi Irwin, daughter of the late wildlife expert Steve Irwin, conservationist, took the Good Morning America to announce a new partnership with SeaWorld. Her grandfather, naturalist and conservationist Bob Sr. Irwin, has weighed in on the whole drama. The Bob Irwin Wildlife and Conservation Foundation, in a clear jab at SeaWorld, Bob Sr. Irwin blasted the use of captive animals for the performance of tricks with the intent of mere entertainment for financial gain, aka a fucking water-themed circus. My personal stance, he goes on to say, is that any organization that keeps animals in captivity that does not consider and provide that for the animal's physical, mental, and emotional needs should not be keeping that animal and other solutions should be sought out. The Bob Irwin Wildlife and Conservation Foundation, Inc. I do not support the use of captive animals for the performance of tricks with the intent of mere entertainment for financial gain, my son, Steve Irwin, fought tirelessly for the welfare of animals and for educating the public about conservation. Steve had a big heart for wildlife, and where he saw injustice and cruelty, he spoke out. Steve and I were as one on the issues of animal welfare community education and engagement in conservation. Bandy Irwin and Chandler Powell are accused of selling out by their own fans by doing sponsored posts on Instagram, when in reality they sold out a long time ago by working with SeaWorld. When it comes to how the employees are treated at the SeaWorld Parks or Projects... 
A tourist home video captured Don Brand's show, playfully feeding Tillicum the killer whale. But moments later, this show would take a horrifying turn when the six-ton whale turned on his trainer. Came back around to the glass, jumped up, and grabbed the trainer by the waist and started shaking her violently in her shoe, last thing we saw was her shoe floating. A police report describes multiple trainers attempting to corral Tillicum using nets, with Brand's show inside Tillicum's mouth. She did not survive. Immediately, questions arose over how this could happen to a 17-year veteran of SeaWorld, seen here talking about the animals she loved. We interact with them day in, day out. We're working together and having a lot of fun as well. Investigators learned Tilly had a violent past, including drowning a trainer at a park in Canada. Capitalism obviously puts the, you know, money before its employees. It puts profits over lives. As usual, SeaWorld trainer Dawn was killed in 2010 when a killer whale pulled her into the water and refused to let go of her during a live show. A lawsuit came out of that that the company, that the court said that SeaWorld had exposed trainers and employees to hazards while working on the job in close contact with killer whales by getting in the water during performances. The agency has fined the company $75,000 after the trainer Don had drowned by the killer whale Talnum. A New Hampshire family had also sued the park saying that their 10 year old son was traumatized after witnessing the whole thing happen in front of him. A former SeaWorld staffer who says she was fired after 45 years is suing the company for alleged age discrimination and decades of unpaid overtime. The complaint also accused the company of failing to keep accurate time records, stating that the defendant knew Sherry worked overtime without proper com compensation and the company willfully invaded and failed to refuse to pay her overtime wages at the required rate. SeaWorld faces a class action lawsuit over its alleged failure to pay all w wages owed to the workers laid off during the onset of COVID-19 pandemic and have not been rehired, despite the company's stated plan to eventually bring them back. In 2016, SeaWorld admitted that it had been sending its employees to pose as animal activists to spy on animal rights organization PETA and their activities. Another problematic activism thing is PETA. PETA is a horrible company as well, or group or whatever. Following an investigation by an outside law firm, SeaWorld's Board of Directors Management told to end the practice. Allegedly, these are some rules that SeaWorld employees have to follow. Don't tell anyone that animals are ill. One example of this rule came from John Hargrove, a former trainer at SeaWorld. He revealed on Reddit that sea lions and walruses at SeaWorld in California go blind because of bad water quality at the park but workers weren't allowed to say anything to the customers. Clearly the customers, aka the public, wasn't aware of this at all. Um, you're allegedly not allowed to criticize a company ever. One former trainer confirmed that SeaWorld's trainers were not permitted to voice any opinions or concerns to managers or supervisors or they could be fired. In short, you can't talk bad on the company if you want to keep on helping the animals, even if you're just dissing the stuffy shark costume you have to wear 40 hours a week. Multiple Redditors who used to work at SeaWorld say if they want to keep in touch with former co-workers after publicizing their criticisms of SeaWorld and the company, they have to keep things on hush-hush mode. SeaWorld does not take kindly to former employees spreading information, however true or if it isn't true. Our final story from the cracked former employee at SeaWorld, a guest shoved a tawny frog mouth bird from its perch in front of him and the worker flipped on the guest calling him a name. Uh, SeaWorld allegedly puts, you know, the customers over the employees. You know, the customer's always right. Not only was the worker reprimanded, but also uh, the guests just walked around the park free. They didn't do anything to the guests. Clearly a smile is the only thing you can offer to guests. Uh, they, SeaWorld, make up lies to suit the situation, allegedly. A former SeaWorld employee wrote for Cracked that when something went wrong in an exhibit just like Stingrays freaking out over a habit move, the staff had to lie to visitors and customers to justify the animal's odd behavior. So instead of telling them the truth, the truth that the rays were trying to escape the water, they said they were tr trying to give birth. The two former trainers from SeaWorld who also appeared in the film Blackfish noted that the staff was always told not to 
uh, see the animals and like they had emotions or whatever. Anti-morization, that is, they weren't supposed to view the orcas as having emotions or feelings. It seems like such a strange mandate since creatures, these, you know, killed whales are so intelligent. One former worker confirmed that although he had zero qualifications for working at SeaWorld, he only got the job and hired because he looked all right in a wetsuit. Further, the writer noted via Cracked that it seemed to be a trend. One senior trainer had no experience at all and was only hired because she was allegedly dating someone within the company. John Hargrove, a former SeaWorld trainer, said via Reddit that orcas in captivity grind their teeth down due to stress affecting their mental health along with their physical health. After the teeth were ground down, trainers must drill into the tooth then flush it daily multiple times to keep an abscess from forming. But at the time, trainers aren't supposed to publicize the whale's health conditions or dental issues. And the last thing that I found is that SeaWorld employees allegedly are not allowed to share in social media. The former employee who wrote for Cracked explained that social media and talking at SeaWorld and their problems about it was strictly forbidden and banned for employees, even if it was positive info. No worker was permitted to share anything about their work life, not online, not with their own friends, or even co-workers themselves. And that includes sharing photos of themselves in the park and its inner workings. The same employee Writing for Cracked explained that when animals die from stress or poor conditions at the park, no one knew unless they were there when it happened. That's how tight-lipped workers were because they were afraid of losing their jobs. And that's the way management wanted it and the higher-ups. Even when a baby dolphin passed away after being separated from its mom too soon because SeaWorld had a history of their, you know, baby killer whales and dolphins dying.